Hello everybody and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer and today we are diving into the wonderful world of League One, a division that as Wolves fans we have fond memories over broke all the record. I just had to get that in there, Scott. You know, Wolves haven't been on the best form this season, so it's something positive. Uh, and, you know, we had a great season. We took 8,500 8 fans away to MK Dons. I think that's a record for an away attendance in England. And speaking of MK Dons, we are actually going to be doing a playoff video when they're included. Yeah, they are included. And of course, it, four big teams in this League One playoff. And of course, everyone loves the playoffs, um, apart from if you're unfortunate and one of the losing teams. But as a neutral watching it, everyone loves the playoffs. They love getting behind it. And you can see why. It, it's why, it's why you know, the Championship, League One, League Two, they're, they're the greatest, one of the greatest leagues in the world, really, in terms of the excitement, because you've always got something to play for. And of course, Wickham, one of the teams we'll be covering, they obviously got into the playoffs at the last minute themselves. So, yeah, it's, yes. uh, it's uh, there's always something to play for in these leagues, isn't there? And of course, we're going to be covering always. the four teams in the playoffs. Um, we're going to dive into their seasons a bit, talk about, you know, just uh, everything that's gone on, really. And then, of course, at the end, we're going to be giving our actual predictions. We don't know whether they're going to be the same. And we're going to end up predicting okay. our actual uh, team to win it. I'll be surprised if we both agree. We usually don't. We usually don't. This is what this is our incredible presentation that we've put together for you guys at home so you don't get bored looking at two losers on screen or video. So, Scott, one thing that jumps out at me, and we'll talk about the first fixture, which will be MK Dons versus Wickham. Not much separated these four teams from third to six, whether it's points, games won, Goal difference isn't really that much of a difference. Normally from third to six in the playoffs, whether it's League Two, League One and Championship, there's normally about a 10, maybe 12 point swing because the team in six just scrapes in like Wickham did. And the team in third normally is fighting for that second place. And although MK Dons just missed out to Rotherham, there's actually not much difference between all four. No, and that's what's really interesting because the exact thing did happen. Wickham just got about got in and obviously MK Don's results just got a different out. way yeah. could have ended up actually automatic. But they, they are very close. And, you know, you sometimes feel sorry for third place when they've got like a 15 point lead on six and they're like still have to go <laughs> through this playoff thing. But all four teams have been really, you know, really close. And what's interesting when we look at this MK Don's versus Wickham, um, when you look at the heads-to-heads, -heads, MK Dons have won both of their heads-to-heads -heads in this season. But what yes. it makes this tie really interesting for me is when you look at Wickham's recent form, they've actually had a great run of form and unbeaten in 12. It's going to be yeah. a really hard one to predict this, to be honest. It really is, because you look at Wickham on one hand, they actually won these playoffs two seasons ago. They've got experience in this position, not only in the semi-finals. They went to Wembley, did the business. Uh, last season, the championship, if you remember, Derby stayed up on the last day by one yeah. point. I think I th it was one of the craziest championship relegations I've ever seen, because didn't it break the record? Like, Wickham and Derby, both moved in and out of the relegation zone four or five times that day. It was unbelievable. So not only have they got uh, championship uh, experience, they've also got uh, experience of actually winning this. You look at MK Dons, I like their story. Two years ago, they finished 19th in League One, only five points above the relegation zone. Last season, they actually managed to uh, finish 13th. We're seeing that progression with the MK Dons year on year. Just don't have that experience in the playoffs. No, and that's an interesting uh, fact, isn't it? The fact that, you know, when you do look at MK Dons, they really, they've really they done well. They keep progressing, keep yeah. progressing. Really unlucky in some regards not to um, end up in that second spot. Maybe if the form might have been a little better going into the closing stage of the season, they might have just pipped it and got that, obviously, second spot. But they didn't, and they're in the playoffs now. Um yeah, and I agree. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting tie because both teams have good goal scorers as well. Obviously, Scott Twine for MK Dons, he's racked up twenty in the season, finished yeah. with a massive four goals against 
Plymouth, which obviously <laughs> inevitably knocked Plymouth out the playoffs. And that's why we see Wickham in the playoffs now. So Wickham do have something to thank MK Dons fans for. Well, not MK Dons fans, MK Dons for, but I'm sure that won't matter when it gets into it. But of course, Wickham themselves, they've also got the Sam Vokes, who's got bagged 16 himself this yep. season. And it's going to be interesting because you need goal scorers going into the playoffs, don't you? You really do. It's quite funny because I was looking over the last two or three uh, seasons of both the Championship and League One playoffs. And you might agree, just as a neutral fan, and I'm sure most people watching will, when you think of playoffs, semi-finals, the final is a little bit different. They're a bit more cagey. But the semi-finals, you always see score lines of like, oh, one team went through 6-3 on aggregate or yeah. it was a 4-3 or... The first leg was two all, and maybe a one all went to playoffs. You, you don't really get cagey um, semi finals. Is maybe that's because it's over two legs. Maybe teams just want to go for it. I always think that the teams that go up in the playoffs, maybe they weren't the best defensively in the in the season, but they've got goal scorers. I just I don't know what it is. I think goal scorer teams that can just put the ball in the back of the net seem to do better in the playoffs. And I think it's that element, isn't it, of playing without fear. And you can see why, you know, you get these high score lines because of the pressure on it. It takes a lot, a lot to go, you know what, we're going to set up defensively. And often it doesn't actually work because there's just so much riding on this game. The fans will be electric and it's just a, such a high pressured environment. But sometimes, you know what, actually going for it benefits. I mean... We're looking at also Sheffield Wednesday coming up against Sunderland. And I feel kind of sorry for Sunderland in a way, because I feel like for Sunderland fans, if you mention the term League One playoffs, I feel they probably suffer from PTSD from that <laughs> phrase itself. It's not been a joyful time. Obviously, we touched on Wickham's memories of the playoffs, uh, especially League One, obviously being very fond. Sunderland do not have fond memories of this playoffs at all. Obviously, inevitably losing it. I think, is it three times now? Um, but they cut, this this is a monumental game, isn't it? Sheffield Wednesday coming up against Sunderland. It's a massive, massive, massive um, playoff game. It is. And just before I jump into Sunderland a little bit more, I've got to ask, is this the biggest League One, Division Three, whatever you want to call it? Is this the biggest tie? I'll, I'll even throw in the final, but this is a semi-final, of course. This has got to be the biggest tie in this division in history. Sheffield Wednesday versus Sunderland in the League One play. These are two massive institutions of British football. This is yeah. massive. Yeah, and you're right. And, and, you know, no disrespect to MK Dons fans and Wickham fans. I hope they realise where we're coming from. But historically, yeah. Wednesday, Sunderland, these aren't two League One clubs, are they? They are massive, massive clubs, massive fan bases. And, of course... League One, Sunderland have started to spend a bit too long in there now. I think they're going to be really desperate yeah. to come out. And it's interesting. I actually went into their head-to-heads with MK Dons and Wickham. I don't think that's relevant here because Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland played both their games against each other before um, the end of last year. And what's interesting is they've both had managers come in in the latter part of the season, which have really had you know, a, a massive reason on why we're looking at both these teams in fourth and fifth now. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Sunderland didn't even make the playoffs two years ago. They finished eighth. Last season, they lose to Lincoln uh, in the semi-finals, who Lincoln went on to lose to Blackpool in the playoff final. It's just been too long for Sunderland now. You know, you just wonder. Uh, people did say it when they went down. You, you spend two years in there, three years, before you know it, teenagers now, people that are like 12, 13, who've been watching football for four or five years, this is what they see Sunderland as. They, they, probably, yeah. they saw them go down. They, they've they been in the League One for three or four years now. You, you don't want that for Sunderland, especially, I'm sorry to say, you see what your rivals are doing in the North East as well now. I mean, they've just got to get out of this division. But you could also say the same for Wednesday. Again, what a massive club and no disrespect to the MK Dons or Wickham. For Sheffield Wednesday, um, they're a team that they went down obviously last season and finished rock bottom. People wondered if they just, you know, bounce back, win the league, or would they struggle? They've kind of finished in that middle ground. Um, 
should we talk about predictions of the actual games? Yeah, let's talk about that. One thing I did want to pick up on, just very briefly, obviously mentioning Sheffield Wednesday. I think one thing that's been monumental for them, especially in the close of this season, Darren Moore coming in. You talked about, obviously, them yes. finishing bottom. What he's done as a, as a person, really collated that club, got everyone singing from the same hinge sheet. And they actually come into that now, obviously only two losses since he's come in of the yeah. 13 games he's took charge, which is going to be really interesting. On the other hand, you had obviously Alex Neal that came in for Sunderland. Didn't get it right straight away. It actually took six games to end up getting a win, but they too were coming into the close of the season in much better form, obviously with a pretty decent unbeaten record as well. I think we should start diving into those actual predictions. Let's though. do it. Let's start off with the MK Dons, um, Wickham Wanderers one. How have you got this one going, Mo? Uh, both your predictions, Omer and the away leg, or first and second leg. The thing is with Wickham, they've got experience going up. They did ever so well last season to try and stay in the league, and they were so close. A lot of these players are still there. I but then I look at the MK Dons and it's not as if the MK Dons have just had a, a season out of nowhere. You could say that, but again, we've just seen that progression season after season. I think I have to just give it to the MK Dons. I think they'll do it. I really, really do. But the form of Wickham, I just... It's a hard one, this, isn't it? Because as we, me and you know, we never think ahead to the actual predictions. We like it to be as natural as possible. And for once, I actually wish I'd stopped and thought about what my prediction was going to be and not just at this point. <laughs> because what you have is a, you have an MK Dons team, as I said earlier on in the video, finishing off their season with a massive 5-0 victory over Plymouth. But we can come into this, haven't lost in a long time and... You know, if you haven't lost a game and you've got a good unbeaten run going, then that sides really well for you, doesn't it? And I think that's and why it's so hard to predict because I'm kind of like, you can make really good cases for both. You could do. see this go to a bit of an extra time and penalty suit out scenario. Or do you think like it could it, it could end up it will get decided one way or another? It it could. Uh, I. I... It's very hard to predict the penalties because it's unlikely that's going to happen, especially over 180 minutes. Both these teams have scored goals. And you, I, I have this weird thing with myself where I, I tend to back the team that just scrapes into the playoffs. We see it with the championship every season. That team that comes out of nowhere, they were 11th with seven games to go, but they win five of the last seven and sneak in. They've got the momentum. The team that finishes third... Do they just get deflated? That especially for MK Dons, how they were so close to Rotherham last game of the season. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I look, I'll think... jump in, and yeah, I think okay. I am gonna back. I'm gonna go MK Dons. You know, I'm actually gonna back MK Dons. I, I'm I... sorry, Wickham fans, but I do think they'll just edge it. I think it's gonna be close. I'm gonna predict the MK Dons home tie will be a two neller. And then I think the away leg, I think Wickham win that, but they only win it 2-1, which means MK Dons do get through on a 3-2 aggregate score. I, I'm also going to go for a 3-2 aggregate score line. And I'm sorry, Wickham, I am predicting MK Dons too. I'm going to go for a 2-1 MK Dons win and a one all draw. Uh, I think... Well, there we go. We both backed MK to get through, but obviously we've got the Sorry, big... Wickham. Please like the big... video still and please subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. I mean, look, it was very hard for us to do, but look, let's talk Sunderland, obviously Sheffield Wednesday. And I still don't fit the predictions between these two get any easier. Um, I mean, look, Sunderland really have not got good memories of these playoffs. Um, no. And it's hard because both teams coming in on good form. You look at Sunderland's last five unbeaten. Sheffield Wednesday, they have got one loss in the last five, but they've also won the other four. And as I said earlier on in the video, only two losses since uh, Darren Moore come in. It feels like both of these new managers that came in, obviously, you know, towards the back end of the season and really both kicked, clicked into gear and got the players going. It's going to be I'm interesting. It really is. And it's... Obviously, you're looking at Wednesday. One thing I would say is it's uncertain whether Barry Bannum's going to be available. Could that make a difference? He's a massive player for them. 
it could make a difference. I was going to say that. And I'm going to go first this time in case we've got the same prediction and people think I'm just copying you. <laughs> you've got the easy route. <laughs> I, I am. I'm, 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 I'm taking the easy way out. I'm... I'm going to back Wednesday. I'm sorry, Sunderland. Again, please like, please subscribe. But I just, I think Sunderland, it's been so long. I just think that they're nerve. I think there's something in that club, a little bit like Arsenal and United, that DNA is just not there at the moment or anymore. And I think, especially with Sunderland losing in the semi-finals last season, for Wednesday, They've spent years in the championship. They went down, you could say, unluckily last season. I think they've just been a little bit more solid of the two teams this season. Or, or what, as I've been keeping up to date with League One this season, I'll see Sunderland not winning seven games. And I'm thinking, here we go again. Wednesday have lost quite a few games this season, but they don't tend to lose like three out of five. They tend to just keep it ticking over, ticking over. I think they're more consistent than Sunderland. I think I'm going to go Wednesday, and I think I'm going to say, I think they win both ties. Have oh, I got to give a score cool. prediction? As, have I got to give a score prediction? Yeah, I want the score predictions too. I'm going to say 2-1 and 3-2. I think Sunderland might go for it in the second leg. 2-1, 3-2, 5-3 on aggregate. Look, I'm, I'm also going to upset Sunderland because I just think Wednesday, I, I have to say that I think Alex Neil has really got it right with Sunderland now and I'm he interested has. to see what they do next season. Like, can they turn it around and maybe even get automatic? But I just feel there's such bad memories and bad associations with that playoffs for Sunderland now. You ever wherever that's going to make a massive difference. So I'm going to go for Wednesday to get through. And I think it's going to be a close tie. I really do. I, I, I do. What? I think I, I, I give Sunderland the victory at their place. I do think they'll get a one 0 victory at their place. But I think Wednesday. I think Sunderland more susceptible to a big defeat than Wednesday are. And I think that's what will happen. I think you see a three 0 victory at Sheffield Wednesday. I think it's going to be a really big call. But I think that's how it's going to go. So of course we've now got Wednesday. And Wickham in the final. Uh, James, let's start off with a quick prediction on this final. You obviously said that you like... Hold on, Wednesday and in. MK Dons, you mean? Wednesday and MK Dons. Sorry, MK Dons, yes, third and fourth, yes. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, you you know, obviously going into this out of the two, but to be fair, MK Dons, a decent-sized club as well, but who are you going to back? Am I going to go against everything I believe in? that a third-place team doesn't win the playoffs. I just... <sighs> I mean, we might have got it wrong. One of the teams that we've got out might win this. You just never <laughs> yeah, know in these, in these playoffs. I think I might go MK. I might Ooh. go... I think I Score might... Prediction. 2 one at Wembley. There we go. Well, you've got 2-1. I'm actually going to back Wednesday myself. I think Darren Moore's Ooh. come in, done a fantastic job. And I am going to go 2-1. I'm just going to go 2-1 Wednesday. So, wow. I mean, look, maybe at least we've kept MK Dons fans and Sheffield Wednesday fans happy. <laughs> sorry, Sunderland. Hopefully you'll see why. And sorry, Wickham, to you guys also. But look, if you have enjoyed the video, even if we didn't predict you to win the playoffs, do hit that like button. Please do subscribe and also let us know your thoughts on who you think is going to win the playoffs too. And we'll hopefully see you on another video. Goodbye. Take care.